What's good, Wes? All right, don't mind the, the mask. I wish I could take it off, but I'm out here in Puerto Rico. They're really strict about this or else they start throwing mofongo at me. All right, so the hottest topic right now, um, Ben Askren and Jake Paul. I just want to know your opinion from the MMA side, being an MMA practitioner, fighter, coach, all of that, and your side from the business side. What do you think Jake Paul's doing on the positives? What do you think he's doing on the negatives? Gus, I'm so glad you sent me that video clip because this is definitely the hottest topic right now. I don't know what's hotter unless you're talking about some negativity on some, you know, uh, political aspect and what's going on in different realms with COVID. Minus that, this is without a doubt the hottest topic. And I had a lot of people send me DMs and people who know me personally send me uh, uh, texts asking me to address this. But my boy came through with the video clip. So, you know, he's got first dibs. For the, all y'all, all you guys watching, man, I would love for you guys to send some video clips the same way Gus did, you know, just make it a little bit more personal, have some fun with it. Except I hope you're not wearing your mask like he was, but hey, man, he, he explained why, why he was doing that. So, Jake Paul versus Ben Askren. For those of you guys who know, don't know what the hell's going on in the world, I don't know what cave you're, you're locked in or whatnot, but Jake Paul, in short, internet sensation, I don't know how, maybe about 2 million followers, maybe more, I don't even know. I never even came across the guy until he did this whole boxing ordeal, calling people out, beating, knocking out uh, Nate Robinson, uh, an ex-NBA basketball player. Once again, in case you guys don't know, give it a look. So this internet star um, who has a brother, Logan Paul, they damn near look alike, one's bigger than the other, two blonde-headed, surfing-looking, you know, white dudes. I don't even know where the hell they're from. Might be Cali, I might be jumping the gun, who knows. But they're both paid, man. They're both paid from doing I don't know what stupid shit online. And um, apparently they started doing boxing. They started training boxing on their own. Not on their own, but, you know, they chose to start training boxing. And I guess the cockiness that they were building, you know, they, they, were, they don't have the best reputation. I guess they do annoying things. Again, I have not watched what they do, how they got famous. But I guess they do some annoying shit, some bully shit, some degrading shit, some condescending stuff. Some real act silly, stupid, get drunk. I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? Nah, it doesn't matter to me. More props to them. Very successful. They're killing it. And then they chose to go the boxing route. Apparently, Logan is about to fight Mayweather. That's right. Logan somehow convinced Mayweather to come out of retirement to fight him. And Logan is way bigger on many levels. We'll have part two when that comes about. Jake, on the other hand, had a fight with an internet guy that he had beef with. Didn't look that good. I think they went back and forth. Then he had a fight with Nate Robinson, the next NBA player that a lot of us know. Real short guy, but still a little stud. Knocked him out. Made him look bad. The whole world reacts really bad, saying, hey, man, you got lucky. You're not a real boxer. And the people who are really attacking him on that tip are more so fighters and boxers, but mainly fighters. And when I say fighters, I mean MMA fighters. So I guess, you know... There's really no guessing. Jake Paul made it really obvious. You guys can look it up. I don't know who was the interview, when he posted it, but he made it very obvious. We are on my terms. I have the ball in my court. I know that I don't stand a chance if I go do MMA and go against anybody. He knows the multitude of levels that is necessary in order to be partially halfway decent in MMA. You have striking, which is not just boxing. It's boxing with kicks and knees and elbows. And there's different levels of that depending on your background, taekwondo, Muay Thai, um, karate. Uh, there's a lot of different styles out there. Then you have the wrestling grappling aspect. That means if I put my hands on you or you put your hands on me, this clinch, this grappling, this I want to take you down. I want to throw you to the ground. I want to hip toss you, judo. Um, or I just want to keep you in a clinch and beat you up real dirty while I keep you in a clinch. Very Muay Thai, very uh, Roman Greco wrestling. Then you have when you go to the ground, jujitsu. So there is a lot to cover there. These boys did not get that rich and that famous by thinking that they can achieve too much too fast. They're staying in their lane. They're 100% staying in their lane. And Jake is a troll. He knows how to push all the right buttons. This is what the kid obviously has built a fortune out of. So he's been pushing the right buttons 
for a lot of MMA people, and basically he's made it clear that his ultimate fight that he's looking for is a boxing match with Conor McGregor. A lot of people, everybody knows Conor McGregor, one of, if not the most famous, you know, uh, fighter out right now. And anybody who fights Conor McGregor, regardless of the results, you're going to make a huge payday. That's what Conor McGregor calls Red Panty Night. So, props to Conor. With, with what's going on with Conor right now in MMA, everybody wants a chance at him. They all think they can beat him, but more importantly, they're barely even worried about becoming champions and doing other things. They just want that big paycheck. And everybody understands that everybody's okay with that somewhat especially in the MMA community. Biggest complaint anybody has ever had against boxing versus MMA is boxing can get boring, boxing has no more stars, boxing is losing its popularity, um, but yet it still pays its fighters substantially more than MMA guys get paid. And when I say substantially more, guys, I'm talking a lot more. Every... You know, every salary is different, every fighter is different, and when you're on the, the, the top of the food chain and you have a championship belt or you're fighting on a pay-per-view event and you're either the main event or co-main event, you have room to negotiate or you already have an agreement where you get a portion of pay-per-views on top of your main pay. So you're sitting pretty there. You know, you're doing pretty good. It's still nothing like boxing. They just get paid way more. I still don't know why. Um, apparently, it's because part of their main deals is they get way bigger percentages of their purses and pay-per-views. I forgot what the split is, but it's a, it's a lot bigger than MMA fighters. Hence why there's a real big argument going on with the John Jones ordeal, things. Listen, guys, if you're not into fighting, keep watching because it's all over. Don't be lost in the sauce. You want to get on board. It's entertainment. And this is the basis of this post right here. It seems like MMA guys are so pissed off because this is what Jake just did. After he put away Nate Robinson, an ex-NBA player, he calls out a few guys in MMA. He knows a lot of these guys are not allowed to fight. They're in contracts with UFC. He knows this for a fact. And he knows Dana White despises him. And he trolls Dana White and pushes buttons and says, I'll beat some of your fighters. And he said some. He didn't say all. He didn't even say that many. But he's choosing the right ones. Ones that he knows have power to convince Dana to let them box outside of their contracts. Ones that he knows he, can, he has a good chance of beating. And then ones that he knows will bring big money fights, especially when he thinks that they're going to be out of their contract soon. So he calls out Ben Askren. Seems like a lame thing to do. Why? Because Ben Askren has been an elite wrestler his whole life. He transitioned to MMA as a wrestler and dominated. But he had a very bad reputation for just dry humping people. He just takes them down because he was such an elite wrestler that he would just take him down, have enough strategy and power and, and, and um, conditioning to wear people down and eventually beat them. Beat them up, pepper them up, got a few submissions. Nothing impressive. It was never, ever, ever impressive. And Dana White refused to bring Ben Askren to the USC because he knew he was a boring-ass fighter who never really went for anything more except dry hump somebody to death, go for some boring-ass grappling, he didn't think he was ready to come to the UFC. So after a lot of bickering back and forth, Dana White gave him an opportunity to come to the UFC, and he did. And what happens? He almost gets knocked out right away in his first fight against Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler started putting those hands on him, boxed him. Robbie Lawler threw them hands on him, beating his motherfucking ass, almost put him away. And somewhere there, Ben, Ben was a little resilient and had some heart and got away from the ass whooping and, and put Robbie Lawler in an unforeseen bulldog choke. Very rare choke move to do, especially in MMA. He did it and got away with it. I, you know, there was a controversy that Robbie Lawler was passing out, but he wasn't, but he might have been. No one really knows. It's kind of on Robbie Lawler. But he won. He won that fight. With a beat-up face, he won that fight. But he was exposed. Anyhow, who did they give him next? Miami's hometown favorite, Jorge Masvidal. And if you guys don't know what Jorge Masvidal did to him, you need to jump off a cliff. Jorge ended that fight in five seconds. It should have been less, but he ended it in five seconds with the, with the most famous flying knee. Shout out to the brethren, Jorge Masvidal, for doing that and doing what he did. So Ben retires afterward. Ben said he has hip 
replacement that he had to get done and so on and so forth. Listen, the guy got exposed. I'm not trying to beat up a man when he's down, but if, 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 if need be, so be it. I'll be that guy. The guy was exposed. Real MMA fighters knew that Ben was not the complete package. He was just a wrestler. And Jorge, when he did that, he did it with such anger because he felt like Ben, and this is what a lot of people don't remember. People don't remember this. Ben was talking cash, I mean cash shit for the longest time before he came to the UFC, acting like he didn't have to work on his boxing, acting like he didn't care if his fights were boring because he was beating people. And if you don't like how I wrestle you and you don't like that I dry hump you or what well, Jorge Masvidal calls um, crotch sniffers, <laughs> um, he says, then beat me. And you know what? He's right. To his defense, if you don't like his boring ass tactics, beat him. You adjust to the wrestling and you beat him. But that was his UFC career. So he retired. And then Jake Paul, because he saw an easy target, and he saw somebody who he knew was cocky, and he knew he could ruffle the MMA community's feathers with reasoning, business move in so many ways. He calls out Ben Askren, along with somebody else. Whoever that other person was, didn't want to take the fight for whatever reason, I, I forgot what it was. And then they reached out to Ben and they offered it to him. And Ben took it. Immediately, Ben is talking shit about this guy like he's just an internet star who's disrespecting the fight game and has no business in the boxing ring. And there's no way in hell that he had a chance of beating him. Why? Because Ben has so many accolades, Olympic wrestler. He knows how to wear you down. He's been in many, many fights. His heart's been tested, so on and so forth. But he ain't a boxer. And here's what here's the, the argument is at, guys. So the MMA community is really ticked off because they feel like this little internet star who's not a real fighter and who's not a real boxer is starting to make a name for himself and he's calling other MMA guys out. And people are mad because they want him to be, you know, put, just shut up, you know? They want, they want a real fighter from MMA to come out and say, hey, you got lucky twice in a row, two and a half times, do that to me. But these guys can't fight out of their contracts. So Jake, in case you didn't know, knocked out Ben Askren in one round. Now, I'm one of the biggest fans of Dana White. And I, I mean that by all, I mean, one of the biggest fans. And um, Dana White, I guess he has so much anger towards Jake Paul because, you know, you almost feel like if you, you, you built this huge reputation, you built the credibility behind these fighters and then your organization, the UFC organization, and you have the best of the best of the best. And for the most part, that is exactly what the UFC has, minus a few fighters in 1FC, minus a couple fighters in Bellator, a little mixed breed of other, other organizations. So Dana White is going to feel like the godfather, the grandfather, the, 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 the father of, of this whole thing. And when some, I'm going to try to speak in what I think he's thinking, when some punk ass, you know, silver spoon fed, white boy comes from the internet sensation, starts doing boxing for a year or two, and starts calling out his people, his fighters, thinking he can really, you know, change the world, it, it really pisses him off. He also used to be a very, very avid boxing fan. And he knows that boxing is on the decline, and he hates all the corruption and dirtiness and, and, and um, horrible refereeing and judging and all that that happens in, in boxing, and how they, they, they feed fighters a bunch of shitty opponents so they can help build these fighters records get them to 20 and 0 22 and 0 25 and 0 because they're fighting a bunch of bums a bunch of tomato cans he hates that whole process so he has a very bitter attitude towards boxing yet when this whole thing happened he said it on the mike tyson's up in smoke podcast with another another very known ex-boxer uh zab judah and they told him listen man this dude can box this dude is training his ass off. This is all this boy does is boxing. He's training boxing probably four or five, if not six times a week, sometimes two times a day. He's going against all kind of other guys, other boxers, amateurs and pros, other MMA fighters. People just don't know. It's all under watchful eye behind, you know, cameras that people haven't seen footage until he put this ass whooping on Ben. So Dana went as far as to saying, I will bet a million dollars that Ben Askren beats his ass. Jake Paul openly accepted the bet and, and told him, we'll send you the money. Let's do it. Let's make the bet. MMA community gets behind Ben Askren. They're like, Ben, do one for us, bro. 
Don't you dare let this motherfucker beat that ass. You better, you better do what you got to do, because if not, this is, you know, it's going to make us look bad. I disagree. I completely disagree. Ben Askren is an MMA fighter because he came to the MMA world, and the minute you get in an MMA fight that's a professional fight, maybe even amateur, depending on how you want to you know, look at it, you are now an MMA fighter. And if you continue in that career... I don't give a fuck if you got beat. If you're, your whole career, you got beat. If, you, if you're tw- 0 and 20, you got beat all 20 fights, you're still an MMA fighter. Might be a shitty-ass MMA fighter, but you're an MMA fighter. So now, Ben Askren is an MMA fighter. But all the real hardcore MMA fans know that he was not a well-rounded MMA fighter. Never throws kicks. Rarely ever does a submission minus um, a choke. No arm bars or anything high-end in the jiu-jitsu world at all whatsoever. Um, no head movement, no boxing, no none of that. None of that. We've all seen so many fighters emerge and evolve into these awesome, complete packages. Ben shitted on all that to a, to a lot of us fighters. He shitted on all that and just said, fuck that. My wrestling will, will get me past all those ordeals, and I'm going to beat all of you guys. And then reality check hit him. So now he wants to come... Out of retirement, he's been on the couch. He's got the worst dad bod ever. He barely trains. He's coaching wrestling teams, I believe, in high school, maybe college. I'm not sure. And just came off from hip replacement. But sure enough, he was cocky. Sure enough, he wanted that paycheck. He wanted that $500,000 paycheck along with whatever he got for pay-per-view sales. He took it. And he, I'm not going to say he disrespected the game because apparently he trained. He tried to do whatever he had to do for boxing. Now, peak game, guys. A lot, <clears throat> a lot of us, you know, fighters and MMA enthusiasts and people who follow the MMA world or boxing world, just fight game at, at, in general. We saw the video clips that he put up of training. Training with Freddie Roach, one of the best known coaches ever in the world. Training with an ex-pro fighter, uh, K-9. Um, and whoever else. Hitting bags, bag work. He looked fucking horrible from front to finish. Never did he look good at all. I got people that I fucking trained for a year and a half who look 20 times better than him. I'm not making this up. So I don't know where everybody got this confidence that he was going to lead the way and why he had to represent MMA. He doesn't have to represent MMA, MMA fighters as a, as a total. Like, like, bitch, that's you. And you ain't never been a good boxer. You ain't got no hands. You... you, you None, you don't represent me. You're an MMA fighter. Okay, you do MMA, cool. We both do MMA. You don't do it like I do. You don't do it like the rest of the world does it because you were, in a way, cocky yourself. You didn't care to do hands and kicks and all that stuff. So your career ended the way it did, and now you want to come back and do this. All right, cool. You want a paycheck. No, hey, who's arguing against that? Go get that paycheck, brother. That's a fucking nasty fat paycheck for getting your ass knocked out in one round, okay? Cool, now you can go... Tuck your tail and hide for the rest of your life and do what you want to do with that mill or whatever you made in total. But why is everybody mad at Jake? Everybody's mad like Jake is hurting the game. This doesn't look good on MMA, and it doesn't look good on fighters who want to come out of retirement and so on and so forth. Listen, that man is making boss-ass moves. Why are y'all hating? There's no other way around it. You motherfuckers are hating you are caught up in your emotions, man. Emotions cloud judgment, and you guys are so ruffled up that you're talking some shit like he did something wrong. You can't name a single thing that man did wrong. He did all the right things. Called out the right people. Did it on his terms. You guys are like, oh, why doesn't he come to MMA? I'll bet you he'll get destroyed by a white belt. True. True. That white belt's probably stupid enough to come box with him. He's not stupid enough to come box or kickbox or do MMA. The man never said, I will go to your world and beat you. Tyson Fury is currently doing that. Tyson Fury, who's an amazing boxer, heavyweight champion right now, who beat Wilder, is about to fight Joshua. That man is going back and forth with Francis Ngannou, the heavyweight champion, and he's saying, I will beat you. And he said, I will come to your world in MMA. And there's clips of him practicing a little bit of MMA. Let's see where that goes. But that's not what Jake did. Jake's like three fights in to boxing. He's like three years in committed to boxing. Why in the fuck would he entertain that? That would be a stupid ass egotistical move that would make him look horrible to the world. And people know that Bowl, all right, he ain't no idiot. 
hate on him all you want because he's flashy, because he's this, but he's a businessman and he puts in the work. Don't get mad when you put in the work. Hard work beats skills any day if you're not going to work hard, man. You have got to work hard. Ben did not do it. He thought his, I don't know what the fuck he thought. He thought the fact that he had a gas tank on him and he knows how to wear people down as a wrestler would transition into boxing and he must have thought he had a good chin, but he didn't see that overhand, clip him right there and put his ass out. So now for everybody else, Jake is helping boxing out. Jake has brought fans back to boxing. Jake is now making people think, whoa, okay, maybe you could make some moves in boxing. Maybe you don't have to be 22 and 0 coming from some little pueblo in, in Mexico, you know, like, no. And people are mad. I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. This is not directed at any specific people, but I think it's way bigger than fucking this fight game or it's way bigger than Jake Paul and what he just accomplished. I think a lot of you motherfuckers just like to hate. You act like you're happy to see somebody do good, but deep in the back of your mind, you want to see them fall if they're not personally connected to you. I don't get it. Here's a great example. Watch this. Here's a great example. I'm a diehard doll fan. Yeah, I said it. I know. I need to take a sip. I'm a diehard doll fan. That means I am a Miami fan, the Miami Dolphins fan, big time, right? And I never quite got... Our arch enemies, our, our arch rivals in our division, Buffalo Bills, New York Jets, uh, New England Patriots. Buffalo Bills and Jets suck almost as much as we do. We're just fighting to see who, who doesn't, who, who won't, who's going to suck worse. We don't want to suck worse. That's, that's what we're fighting for. Patriots, everybody knows who the hell they are, and we all knew why. Main reason, Tom Brady. I've never met so many fans. I can't figure it out. If they're not from Boston... Or somewhere, somewhere way up there. Now Tampa, obviously. But, oh, I hate Tom Brady. What the fuck? Why? Why would that even come out your mouth? What, what, what do you know about Tom Brady except that he is the example of excellence? He is the GOAT of quarterbacks. He has done it all. Won the most rings. Has he had the most rings? Yeah, I think he's got the most rings. He's the Michael Jordan. Why would you hate that man? He's never said a, a bad comment that you held against him throughout his whole career. I think he's 42, 43 right now, about to go into another year after winning the Super Bowl. Never got caught for no uh, uh, marital issues, no, no racist ordeals. No, none of that bullshit. None of it. None of it. The man has done nothing but break records, win rings, and bring the best out of everybody that's put around him. And yet, almost everybody wants to hate the man. Why? Because he's so good? Why would you hate somebody when they're good, man? Appreciate that shit. Appreciate, applaud that shit. Jake Paul, you're the fucking man, bro. Your little young ass is making moves. Keep on doing that. For the rest of y'all, stop hating. Be happy for the man. And if you represent the MMA community, and for whatever reason you want to see an MMA guy take him out for us, I, cool, I'm not, I can't hate on that. But don't hate the man. Don't, don't, I mean, I don't want to see Tom Brady, especially when he was a Patriot, I didn't want to see him get hurt, ruin, and ruin one of the most amazing careers. He's a father to two or three daughters, husband to one of the most famous, you know, uh, Gloria, uh, Gloria. Uh, holy shit, Victoria's Secret uh, models. Like, there's no way I would want anything bad on him. I just hope my Dolphins can pull it off and win whenever we go against him. Now, he's in Tampa, so that's a different ballgame. But I can understand if the MMA community, you want to see that. Maybe if you got something against Jake and what he looks like and how he, you know, how he, he, he comes off, it reminds you of something. You got bullied. You knew somebody who was like him. Maybe you want to see him get knocked out. Okay, cool. Floyd Mayweather, probably for the last 10 fights, no one wanted to see him win. They just wanted to see him lose. He's super cocky. He throws money around everywhere. He had a lot of racial issues. He had marital issues. He had uh, uh, domestic violence issues. He had a gambling issues. That man had everything. So you can see where people built a certain, you know, uh, negative feeling towards him. And maybe they want to see him win or uh, lose because of all that. So I get that. But guys, for the most part, a bunch of y'all motherfuckers are just haters, man. Shake that shit off and stop being such a hater, man. 
applaud the guy for what he's doing. He's bringing, putting money in a lot of people's pockets, a lot of people's pockets. He's bringing fans back. He's challenging the norm. He's making Daniel, I hope, he's making Dana White and other people step their game up and they're all like in the fucking control room like, all right, guys, we got we to gotta choose one of our fighters who we can let fight out at our contract and let him whoop that boy's ass because now we're going to look bad. Hey, if that's what you're going to do, guess what? Jake Paul just stirred up so much shit that we, that we, just, we, we now have a new category of people fighting each other. There's just a lot more entertainment that's about to happen because of that. That's great. That's great for everybody around. So, please, guys, take this not as some type of fighting ordeal. Take this as a message as control your emotions, man. They cloud your fucking judgment. Control your emotions so you can make your clearer decisions and deliver your opinions in a, you know, in a better way instead of getting caught up in what everybody else is saying and getting all, you know, their feathers are ruffled. Do that and support people who succeed because if you were succeeding no matter what you were doing, if it's not intentionally hurting, backstabbing, you know, causing any harm or negativity to others, you want people to applaud you too, no matter what it is. So keep that in mind. Peace. <laughs>